Hi, my wonderful flute family. We are doing something very different today. I'm going to be analyzing some of these amazing flute players, specifically looking at their tone. I'm pretty excited to see what we'll find. I know some of you are already going to start commenting, why have I left out name your famous flute player? I have only selected a few flute players here today. Guys, there are so many great players. I cannot possibly do a video with all of them. But if you like this video, if you enjoyed this video, drop a comment below and let us know if we should do a part two of this video. Also, add your favorite flute player and maybe we'll review them in the next video. Oh, and little disclaimer here, like I am not in this to offend anybody, insult anybody. If anything offensive is said, it is my personal opinion and does not represent the opinion. What are you supposed to say? The opinions of the flute practice. It's my opinion, guys. It's my opinion. Let's dive in. I'm going to be putting on my space ears. They just do create a nice sound. Okay, so our first amazing flute player is none other than Jean-Pierre Rampal himself. I think probably one of the most iconic flute players and a video without this man is probably not a flute video. Okay, as much as I want to just spend time listening to that incredibly beautiful sound, I want to stop us there for just a quick moment because there are a couple of really interesting points here already from the very beginning. The first interesting thing to look at is his position. Really, really cool. And I think um, when I looked briefly at most of these flute players, you are going to so consistently see this position, but you're going to see this wonderful angle of the flute to the shoulders that this angle of the camera actually is it's kind of nice. And oh, that gorgeous sound. It's like, it's like really gently pale, like golden honey. Mm, gorgeous. So this might be my perception, but it feels like he plays a little more rolled in than some other players, which is interesting, which I think probably contributes to him getting that slightly darker sound. Isn't that just one of the most incredibly beautiful things? Such sweet, delicate, in control high notes. Absolutely, absolutely stunning. Something else that's really interesting to watch is his movements actually of his body. So when he's moving with the flute, he's not standing completely still, but he's moving and all of his movements are kind of horizontal movements and from his feet rather than kind of bending forward in his abdomen. And then of course, the really big one here, the really, 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 really big one is the off to the side embouchure that he has got. This is actually incredibly fascinating how many great players play with an off to the side embouchure and create an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful sound. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, I keep pausing the music, it almost feels sacrilegious to do this. <laughs> but remember we are analyzing, I have dropped all the links below by the way, so you can go and watch these videos and not hear my super annoying voice the whole time. Something that's really interesting to me about this video is that the tone is not always flawless. Like, it is amazing, it is beautiful, he's got a lovely natural vibrato, incredible colors, really, really, really beautiful. But what's interesting to me is that it's not like 100% clean. Every now and then you hear maybe a little bit of even throat noise, you're hearing a little bit of breath noise, but yet it doesn't detract from just how unbelievably gorgeous this playing is and this music is and you know, the overall playing. So I think that's very encouraging actually. I'm gonna jump to another video and let's see if we can get slightly different perspectives. So this one's interesting. He's playing the Inesco Cantabile at Presto. And what's interesting here is he's a little bit younger. As we age, our playing does tend to change a little bit. So let's go for it. Mm -hmm. 
So there you can really see that nice off to the side embouchure. Again, the feeling I have is that he may play a little bit more rolled in, but not too rolled in. So when I've told my students 500 million times, don't roll in your flute too much, that's not what he's doing because his intonation is flawless, his tone is beautiful in the high registers. I think it's just a slightly darker sound. Beautiful. <laughs> It's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Really what strikes me in this is just the most beautiful musical playing. But there still are little moments of tone things that happen and it's so cool to actually hear it. Hey, guess what? A human being is playing this music. Yes. Okay guys, we are going to move on to the next great one and of course it's Galway. We are going to start off with this Danny Boy. He plays this in almost every single concert. It's kind of his signature piece. So we absolutely have to listen to it and watch it. Let's go. So immediately what's so interesting is how different the sound is here. Gorgeous sound. Galway, I think, is just world famous for this round, rich, warm sound on the flute. Interesting as well, a lot more vibrato than Rumpel. As far as I can see, Galway is pretty much center with his embouchure. Maybe a tiny bit off to the side, you can kind of get a little bit of a sense of it here. I just love how natural his embouchure looks always. I mean, maybe it's also the beard, like you can't actually see it, but it just looks so effortless and natural and sounds that way. I think what really stands out to me in this performance is just how much of his heart he pours into this playing. Oh, it's just beautiful. Again, you see that really nice 45 degree angle of the body to the flute. You see this with Galway and actually Rampal, you see this as well. Slight tilt of the head to the side and the flute kind of angling down a little bit. There's no problems with this. It's actually making sure that the flute and that lower lip are staying nicely parallel to each other to get that best sound. I know many of you have been taught to hold your flutes upright all the time. Now I'm not com advertising like really tilting your head over too much. You're going to get a sore neck eventually, but a bit of a tilt of the head and the flute clearly works very well for these guys. This is probably some of my favorite Galway playing. It's just really him pouring his heart into the music. You can really sense that it means a lot to him, this music. Um, and it's amazing how that really comes through. But I think let's go to another video just to get a bit of a comparison. So I think he's a little bit older in this recording. Yeah, I think he must be well into his 70s here already. camera angles. <laughs> okay, one more Galway just because we can and because it's Galway. So this is an interesting video because it's Galway when he was really young, <laughs> which is fun. Again, quality of the video is probably going to be pretty terrible, but lots of interesting things to see. Oh yeah, that's Galway. Cool, 
ah, oh, listen to that. Isn't that amazing how much a player changes in their career and in their lifetime? Like, all of these Galways, all these versions of Galway are beautiful, really, really, really lovely, but quite different, actually. I think what's really interesting here, of course, that incredible technical proficiency, which is just amazing to listen to. Very nice, again, effort effortless low register. Really cool. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous sound. Recording quality, not as great. <laughs> not his fault. We get that swaying again from the feet, not cutting off the body in any weird contorted angles. Um, lovely angle of the flute to the body. Really, really, really wonderful. I think with all these players, what's so interesting is how they use their bodies to play these instruments. Ah, very cool. All right, folks. We're going to go in for another older generation player. Um, before we go into some of young generation players, we are going to listen to Jean Backstresser or Jeannie Backstresser. I never know how to say that. Help anyone in the comments. Absolutely iconic US female flute player. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any videos of her. If anybody has got a video of her actually playing, please do send it our way. <laughs> Okay, just because uh, we're on this image here right now, we can kind of get a little bit of a sense of her um, her playing position at least. Again, the basics are there. We've got that lovely angle of the body, um, that nice openness for the support and the breathing. Here you'll see she's playing a little bit more horizontal than the other guys. I think she's pretty central embouchure-wise. Incredible, very, very, very precise, articulated playing. Absolutely beautiful playing. Very fiery and passionate and full of energy. Again, a beautiful, round, rich, full sound. Quite a bit of vibrato in the sound, which gives it a nice kind of virtuoso characteristic. Oh, I just love her sound is like this deep, rich, chocolatey sound. It's this absolutely like silky, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sound. Okay, we are moving along to the next wonderful soul. We're gonna go on to another really great female player, none other than Jasmine Choi herself, of course. So here what's really interesting um, and quite kind of in contrast to some of the other players, she's got a very nicely centered embouchure. We can see that so, so, so nicely over here. Beautifully centered embouchure. We can see again, like with the other players, that beautiful kind of nice upright position. Even though here she's bending, she's bending from the knees and the hips. So she is not bending over in the middle of her body. So she's getting that nice or keeping that nice support structure intact. Very nice. Also that lovely angle of the body to the flute. Very interesting to look at. Beautiful sound. And what's interesting to me in her sound is it's a lot less vibrato than Galway or Backstresser, for example, but equally beautiful. Very nuanced, colorful playing. Tea. No shaking or making noises, please. Dakota. Don't drive me crazy. So here you can see really nicely how low she actually has that flute on her lip. And you can see how much of that cushion of the lip she's got there for her to play with. Really, really, really nice. Super interesting to see. Look how teeny tiny that opening of her lips is. That's amazing. Oh, what unbelievable control. Beautiful. Le artiste, le artiste. Ew, let's do some comparison here. We are going to listen to Jasmine Choi's Inesco. Inesco. Inesto. Inesco. 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 That just got really weird. What's super interesting about the way that Jasmine Choi plays is that a flute is almost kind of sitting a little bit at an angle to her lip like this. So it's kind of almost going a little bit up, 
but, and you can see this really nicely here in this video, that inner edge of her lower lip is in line with the, low, with the lip plate there. So she's still getting an absolutely beautiful focused sound. In fact, it's a very beautiful focused sound. It's this like also dark, rich sound, but a little bit more kind of gentle and sensitive. This is one of my favorite things about listening to these different players. Not a single one of them so far has sounded the same. And I think that's what makes it so exciting. We're heading into our last player for today, which is, of course, Emmanuel Pahu. I don't think any discussion of contemporary modern day flute players is quite complete without this incredible player. This one was one of my particular favorites in university. I was pretty obsessed with him, to be honest. What really strikes me here is just the effortlessness of his embouchure. It's like he's not even trying to play. It's just, the sound is just coming out. It's so incredible to watch. Ooh, 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 ooh that's very cool. Yeah, you can see that nice trail of air. Oh, so, so, so nicely, you can see how it goes. There, obviously a bit of an angle here, so it looks like it's cute, but I think it's pretty dead on straight. This is actually a really great shot. You can also see here, so nicely, so some of those other players that we watched, they played a much more rolled in. They cover a little bit more of the tone hole. Again, there's a level that is just too much and it's not functional. There is a little bit of wiggle room here and it changes the sound, but you can see that Pahu plays quite rolled out. That is to say, his lower lip isn't covering a huge amount of that tone hole, very, very nice shot to actually see that lower lip kind of folding over the edge of the flute there nicely, that upper lip coming over the top to angle the air down into the flute, and of course that wonderful central condensation stripe that we can see there. Golden shot. <laughs> Look at that. There we can see it really nice and clearly. So here you can see that lovely cushion of lower lip over the edge of the flute, which we really need, that nice cushion there. And you can see that inner edge of the lip that is actually lining up quite, quite nicely or fairly well with the um, inside of the flute there. Really, really, really nice, nice. So you can see how that air is going to hit the edge of the flute at a nice 90 degree angle or something pretty close to it. Very nice focused small opening of the lips. Really, really, really nice. And just look how relaxed that embouchure is. It's not for no reason this man has a just <laughs> probably possibly one of the most beautiful natural sounds. I mean, I love all the flute players we've listened to today. They are all amazing and incredible to listen to in their own ways. Probably still one of my favorites. Guys, those are just some flute players that I really enjoy listening to that are just really, really fantastic players. Of course, there are so many great players. And again, put your favorite flute player down below and let us know, do you want a part two of this video? We will take some of the most commonly mentioned names down below and we will do a video analyzing those players. Also, get onto our mailing list. We are planning to do a little flute player listening series where we're going to listen together through a whole series of wonderful different flute players. I think it's amazing how Every flute player has got their own unique individual sound. And I think that we've got so, so, so much to learn from each other. We can encourage each other, we can support each other, but I think we've got to really be careful of not trying to be each other or compare ourselves to each other. As always, happy practicing guys, and see you next time. I'm gonna take my buggy. Whoa, I can hear. Those are surprisingly noise canceling. Noise canceling, yes, that's a thing.